Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And thank you for tuning in with me to hear um, Woman to Woman. I know all of you guys are probably excited and probably wondering what it is that I want to talk to the woman about on um, tonight. This is a special episode. Uh, this was actually was not planned, but it was put in my spirit to, you know, talk to the women and um, have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with the women. And um, and it's woman a woman. I don't know if you ever heard the song that by Betty Wright that says woman a woman, if you care like I do. So I kind of like got the title from the Betty Wright. Those of you who are um, probably in your late 40s, you know what I'm talking about, right? Okay, so, um, but I just wanted to come and talk to you guys tonight. Um, wanted to talk to the singles, those of you who are courting, those of you who are engaged, and those of you who are married and or want to be married. Um, be the beginning of the year, the Lord spoke to, spoke to me and he spoke in my spirit in reference to kingdom marriages and kingdom relationships and the prophetic word, word that is going all over the nation. If you go on YouTube, you'll see all the prophets, those of us that are prophets, all of us are talking about all of us are talking about the kingdom marriages as we are in the last days and being in the last days, the Lord is bringing a kingdom man and a kingdom woman together for his glory, for his clean kingdom purpose. I keep telling people that it's all about purpose. It's not about what, it's not about our little old in, in those secrecies, but it's all about his purpose according to Romans 8, 28. And so I wanted to talk to the singles and mainly this conversation um, is coming from a lot of questions that I've been getting from the public. I don't know if you guys know, but I have a radio broadcast that is called Straight to the Point that um, every Monday night on the Men's Let's Talk Network at 8 o'clock p.m. on 347-843-4559. On this particular network, um, we have a relationship segment. However, we have not been doing a relationship segment and a lot of women been hearing me talk about kingdom, um, kingdom marriages, kingdom men, kingdom women coming together for the purpose of the Lord. And so they wanted, they had so many questions and like singles were saying they've been waiting. They've been waiting for a long time. Those who, people wanted to know what the what is the difference between courting and dating. And then people wanted to know how long should you court before you get engaged? And or if you're married, what are some of the things that you should not do as it relates to in the bedroom? So tonight we're going to get raw and uncut in this segment is for women only. We're not discriminating. You know, I'm, I'm not just called to women, but as a prophet, I'm called to speak the oracles of the Lord. But God in this particular hour has me specifically talking to women, women, because like never before, women have been emailing me. They have been texting me. They've been asking me all kinds of questions. They've been saying the Lord said that they were going to get married this year. They've been saying that they've been involved in relationships with, with who they think are kingdom men. However, the man has not proposed as of yet. Um, some have been engaged for more than three years and they both, that she and he are both in the kingdom of God. However, he has not proposed as of yet. And then we have a lot of married couples, people who are married and, have, and who have been married for a very, very long time. However, um, they're having issues as one lady sent me a message and said her husband all of a sudden wanted her to do things that she believed was not, you know, holy. And I told her, I said, well, wait, well, honey, when you're married, and let me just say this, let me be clear. When you're married, the bed is, un is, 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 you know, undefiled. You know, it's not defiled. It's it's not defiled, meaning that whatever you and your husband do in the bedroom is between you and your husband. God honors marriage and he doesn't get involved in sexual relations between a husband and a wife. So um you know, and I'm going to go a little in depth with that when I get to the married segment of this show. Again, I want to thank all of you all for coming in and joining me on tonight. I want you guys to um, send your questions to Dr. Kevin Vaughn, K-E-V-I-N Vaughn, V-A-U-G-H-A-N 
on his page. I want you to send your comments and your questions to him and I'm gonna answer all of your questions at the end of my segment. I wrote a book, Misguided Affections, and this is another reason why I'm having this conversation with you guys because I wrote I wrote a book that's called Misguided Affections. And in writing that book, I talked specifically about Ruth and Boaz, but Boaz being Ruth's man, because so many women are saying they want that they're waiting on their Boaz. And then I specifically talked about Esther and the king. And I specifically said that Boaz was Ruth's man and the king was Esther's man. And so a lot of women got a little disgruntled with me and they wanted me to explain what I meant by that. And, um, and so I'm gonna go a little in depth into that and what I meant by that on tonight, okay? And but first I wanna talk about being single. You know, a lot of people, um, don't understand why they are still single. And um, a lot of people wanna, they, they wanna get in relationships, but a lot of them are hurting, a lot of them are afraid. And so first and foremost, what I wanna say is that if you are have any fear of getting in a relationship or if you are still hurting or if you still feel like you need to be delivered, then no, I do not suggest you going into a relationship as of yet. My suggestion is that you will get healed and that you will allow the Lord to make you whole. Amen. That's because getting in a relationship is not going to heal you. You, you God will bring two holes together, W-H-O-L-E. Okay, he's not going to um, uh, bring you to a man that's, and I'm talking to ladies, that, you know, why you're still broken. You know, the goal is for you to develop your relationship with the Lord and for you to um, allow him to heal you of all of, of your past hurts and any fears and anything that, that have not been made whole in you yet. Because if you do not, you will take that into the next relationship. So I, my advice and what I suggest to women is for you guys to, um, that are dealing with, if you're single and you're, if you're still dealing with hurt, if you're still dealing with pain from an old relationship is that you do not go into the next relationship with that hurt and pain, that you will allow the Lord to heal that brokenness, that brokenness, that hurt place so that he can make you whole. So when you when he do connect you with your kingdom mate, that you guys will, will be on fire and ready to go to battle for him, okay? All right, so also being single, in my book, I particularly talk about single doesn't mean um, um, available. And what I meant by that is, um, if a lot of people are single by choice, and the reason why some of them are single by choice is be, and from my experience and, and talking to many of you women, is because you, know, you want to work on yourself, and that's fine. It's okay to work on yourself. It's okay. Don't feel bad that you recognize that you that you were able to look in the mirror and recognize that, oh, it's me. I got some issues that I need, um, I need to deal with. And so um, it's okay to be single. And but while you're single, for those who are single and those who are waiting, it's okay for you to go out and enjoy yourself. I got a question. And somebody said, when I'm saved, I go to church. And you know, I feel like that's all I need to be doing as a single woman, but I'm starting to get bored my advice to you is if you know just because you go to church don't mean that you cannot enjoy life the bible says jesus says i come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly so what you need to be doing as a single is you need to be number one working on yourself getting yourself together, asking the Lord to prepare you for whatever, whether as single life or married life, to prepare you for the purpose that he has for your life. But you do not just, you know, go to church and come home, go to church and come home. If you, if the Lord were to decide to bring you someone, how do you know that it's in your church? Your mate may, may not even be in your church. He, he may be at the mall. He may be somewhere where you're va vacationing at. So you may be going on a vacation and you may meet the love of your life while you're on vacation. You might be at the mall and you might meet the love of your life while you're at the mall. But if you're going to church and coming home, going to church and coming home, you know, that's probably why you're still single. And so, you know, a lot of um, um, dogma, a lot of dogma has been taught 
and to the woman, um, always telling us to, you know, and you do supposed to be holy. You know, you know, don't get me wrong. The Bible says be holy for he is holy. But that doesn't mean that how you dress, you know, wearing them long dresses all the way down to your um, ankles don't mean you're holy, okay? When covering up your whole face and your whole body doesn't mean you're holy. That doesn't make you holy. Holy is is a, is, is an inner thing. It's an inner thing, okay? It's a characteristic thing. It's a mind thing. It's a soul thing. That's what holy is. And I'm not saying you should wear dresses all the way up to, you know, to your butt. No, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying that, you know, you should dress in, in a manner of prosperity looking, classy, elegance, you know, depending on where you're going. If you're going on a job interview, you want to put on your best suit. If you're going out to a ball, you want to put on your best dress. You know, it's not that you're going looking for somebody, but you should always carry yourself in a manner of elegance and classiness and um, keep yourself up, keep your head down, keep your nails. I keep my nails done. Keep your head done. Keep your nails done. You know, although I'm single, I still take care of myself, not because I'm, I'm not looking for anyone, but because I, you know, that's just who I am. That's my nature. And so as single women, we have to take care of ourselves. We have to, and when I say take care of yourself, I'm talking about in every area of your life, you know, that is out the window with the, you know, if he don't like me for me, that's it. Baby, let me tell you something. Men are visual, okay? You could be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, but the first thing he see is the natural you, okay? Men are not like women. Women, we look, we're more intuitive, okay? Women, we pretty much, we, we look at a certain characteristic right off the top before we even decide to go out or anything of that nature, but men, before they even can get to know who you really are, they're looking on the outside. And I'm not saying get all made up for a man, get made up for you. Because as a woman, we ought to keep ourselves up. We ought to keep our health up. We ought to you know, look good for ourselves. And we are mothers. We ought to be examples for our children. And so um, woman to woman, girlfriend, you know, get it together. If you need to go to the dentist, go to the dentist, okay? I go to the dermatologist all the time because I have very sensitive skin. And so, um, you know, get it together. And so what I'm trying to say is that keep, if you're single and you're ready to mingle, then you need to do what you need to do. Take care of the natural realm as well as the soulish realm. Don't just think because your Holy Ghost feel is speaking at time that that's gonna draw the man look good for him as well, okay? This is this, this woman to woman talk. We're talking open and honest. I don't want nobody religious sending me no questions. This is, if you're a woman of God, we're spiritual men, okay? Don't, I don't want to hear no religiosity tonight, okay? I'm not saying that you can't be single, holy, and 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 satisfied because you can. I'm just simply saying that men are, are visual men, and so it's time for you to, you know, do what you need to do. If you need to shed some pounds, let's shed some pounds. If you need to go to the dentist, let's go to the dentist. If you need to go to the dermatologist, go to the dermatologist. If you want long hair, go buy you a wig. It's okay. It's okay, okay? But I'm not saying to do it for him. I'm saying do it for you, okay? And so I'm talking to my singles. I'm talking to my singles and I'm going to go into 40. So another question I got, and let me answer the questions about um, Boaz and Ruth, and then we're going to move on to Courtney because I don't want to be on here all day tonight, okay? But I want to be on here long enough to answer your questions, okay? By the way, I don't think I introduced myself. I'm Dr. Dolores C. Henderson, and so now that I got that out of the way, let me move on. And so what I mean by Boaz was Ruth's man is that God put them together for a purpose. And so God created Ruth for Boaz and God created Boaz for Ruth. Whoever the Lord has for you, woman, it's the man that God created for you. God knows what you need. He knows your attitude. He knows what type of man you need. He knows what type of man um, that can handle you or you can handle him. You know, God knows what he's doing when he brings two people together. So you have to get my book, Misguided Affections, 
to really understand what I meant by that. If you can go get this book, I break it down what real love is, what love is not, and uh, misguided affections, okay? You can get this book by going to any bookstore, or you can email me at um, dth at virtualconsultantsco.com, okay? And I will I go in depth in reference to Boaz and Ruth in this particular book. So my advice to you, you who are single, enjoy yourself, okay? Enjoy your life, go on vacation. Somebody said, well, how do I do it? Well, as you can see this weekend, I went horseback riding, okay? Mother's Day, I had a pop-up shop. I, I, you know, I'm a business person. And so I like to help small businesses. So outside of ministry, you know, it's business for me. But even with businesses, I still help kingdom businesses as well. And so you have to build in, um, upon yourself. Make yourself um, a catch, okay? Go back. If you need to go back to school, go back to school. For you, if you start the ministry, start the ministry, start the business for you, okay? And so go on vacations for you. I was telling them not too long ago, January, my birthday is January the 8th, okay? I was born in the first month of the year on the eighth day, which stands for new beginnings, okay? And um, I had always wanted to go to Rome. And um, last year in January of the year 2020, I went to Rome. And I went by myself and nobody could understand. I was like, you're not going, why are you not taking nobody or why are you going by yourself? Nobody else wanted to go. So I'm not going to stop my life because nobody wanted to go to Rome because they were afraid to fly, you know, and I'm not going to stop my life because I'm not in a relationship with anyone, you know, so women, we have to continue on. We have to first and foremost put Jesus first in our lives, okay? Build a relationship with him. Be content. Once you get content in the Lord, content in, in what you're doing and focus on the things that he has you focus on, then I believe that that man is going to show up, okay? So singles, don't be discouraged. I want you to um, be encouraged and I want you to uh, I want you to stop getting jealous over everybody else's romance because everything on Instagram and everything on Facebook is not what it is, okay? A lot of people post pictures and a lot of times they post those pictures and before you know it the next year they taking them down so don't don't get intimidated don't get discouraged don't get envious of somebody else's relationship because you just don't know really what's going on okay god has somebody for you okay those of you who are listening on to, on to, on tonight i want you to know you're going to get married but while you're waiting don't let, don't make marriage an idol, okay? Don't idolize, don't idolize it because if you idolize it, okay, you're gonna make God jealous and we serve a jealous God. He said, you should have no other God beside me. So don't idolize the marriage. What you do is you continue to put God first. You continue to serve him. You continue to worship him. You continue to build your business. You continue to whatever you are. If you're in a, uh, if you are in a career, you continue to build in your career. You continue to, if you have children, you continue to, you know, empower your children, empower your friends, build a network, of friends, okay? All right. So um so that's that's my um speech for singleness. If you have any questions, write them down. Courting. Somebody asked me what was the difference between dating and courting? And why do I always say you um I don't I don't prefer dating as a Christian? Well first of all there is a difference between dating and courting. When you use the term dating, that means that you're not really in a committed relationship. Y'all are not together, okay? You're not in a committed relationship. Y'all are not together. He can see other people. You can see other people. That's dating. Courting means that this man has soaked the Lord for your, soaked the Lord. This man has been in prayer this man has seen you he has sought the lord he has been in prayer and he don't have to date a whole lot of women to know that you're the one you guys he come to you he let you know that he's interested in you you know and let me just say this even if he does come to you it doesn't mean that you have to say yes you should be prayed up 
to recognize and to know, yes, you, you, what you saw or what you prayed is true. Let's just say, for example, what he prayed and what he saw is true. Okay, he comes to you and he and you guys, you know, get together. Not married yet, but y'all come together and y'all begin to court, not date. Court meeting that he's not seeing anyone else. You're not seeing anyone else, okay? As you guys are courting, you're committed. You both have this, have a goal. And the goal is we're courting towards engagement, towards marriage. You already both know what you want. You don't have to date other people. You already know this is the one. I'm ready to move forward in a courtship. You guys are courting. There's a commitment that yes, we are together. We are courting. Everybody in the church know we're together. Our families have met. Everybody know that we're getting married, okay? That's courting, all right. Then once you guys go through the courting phase, then there's an engagement. He's ready to propose. He's, he's ready to propose, okay? Then you go into the engagement phase. And somebody said, well, how long should I be engaged? Well, I don't, if you both are, let me just say this. If you both are saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, if you both know who you are, okay? If you know who you are, if you know your purpose in life, if you know without a shadow of a doubt, that each of you are, are the one for each other. You share the same values. You have the same value system. Because let me just say this. Let me just fail this. Because just because two people are Christians don't mean they should be together. Because you can have different value systems. You being a Christian and me being a Christian don't mean that we have the same value system, okay? All right? That, the value system is so important. That's why you can have two people who have different religions, but they have the same value system. The value system is different than the, the spiritual system. And so if you have the same value system, Amen. Meaning that you believe in the same values, hard work, dedication, commitment, you know, success, things of that nature, it can work out. But if, and that's why I tell people all the time, just because both of you guys are Christians don't mean that you should be together. Just because you both serve the Lord don't mean you should be together. Amen. It's all about purpose. It's all about purpose. Okay. So don't say, oh my God, I'm, he's a Christian. I'm a Christian. So we have the same value system. That's not the, that don't mean you have the same value system. That means you have the same faith system faith system, spiritual system. The value system is different. He could believe in Jesus and love God with all his heart. Amen. But his value system, he may feel like his value system, he may feel like a woman shouldn't work, but stay home. That's his value system. That's his system. But that don't mean he don't love God or he don't serve God. But you may say, wait a minute, I want to work. I want a career. So if that you guys are bumping heads in that area, Y'all not equally yoked. It's not going to work, okay? And you may love God too. That's why it's very important that when you get into a marriage or a relationship that you both have the same value system, okay? So that's very important. And so you get engaged. So again, like I said, if you have the same value system, if you're on one accord, I don't, me personally, I don't think Christians should court should court longer than a year before they know that, you know, before they move to the next phase. I don't think it takes that long. I was listening to one of the preachers the other day. He said he and his wife, they um they courted for six months and then they got married and they've been married for 39 years today. So, you know, I've heard another lady tell me that she and her husband, they they um got married in 30 days, they got they they dated for courted for 30 days and they've been married for 45 years. So those people who have those long, those short-term courtings and engagements, and then they end up married for 50 years, that's because they both knew what they wanted and who they wanted. It wasn't any type of confusion. Clarity was there. Okay, there was no confusion. And so when you get in a relationship, you want to make sure this man. Um, knows what he wants. Do not they don't, don't even go to the next step with a man that's confused, that's going back and forth, that don't know who he wants. Don't know if a man don't know who he what he really don't know who he is yet. Because you know it's very important that. Um, and I don't care how many beautiful women in a room. Remember, 
if since you guys always like to talk about Esther and Ruth, remember it was a lot of pretty women in that room with Esther. And the king chose Esther, okay? Woman, it's always going to be a, a woman that looks better than you, okay? It's always going to be a, you may be beautiful and a hot tamale. And what I mean by a hot tamale, that means you may be a bad mama jamma, okay? But it's always going to be another woman more beautiful than you are, okay? And so it's okay. And let me just say this. We as women, we got to start hating on each other. We got to start encouraging one another. We got to start uplifting each other, okay? Just because a woman is beautiful and she got it going on, she got her career going, she got it going on, she is bad from the top to the bottom, you need to be gleaning from her, finding out what she did to get there instead of hating on her, talking down or trying to compete or trying to mess her business up, okay? We have to come together and push each other and power one another as women, okay? So me personally, let me get back on subject that... It depends on the relationship and it depends on the couple, but I don't think no woman should be in a relationship more than a year. Well, should be in a courting or in an engaged relationship more than a, a year or a year and a half and that man not, not and you guys not get married. I, it shouldn't stretch more than more than two years, okay? I mean, like I said, I'm all week, I mean, like I've been hearing stories 30 days, six months, and um, these merges have been lasting for 40 years, 39 years. And so that tells you right there, when you find a man, when a man find you, that man should know without a shot of a doubt, you are the one. Going back to Esther, the king loved Esther, although there were so many other beautiful women. She was beautiful, but she wasn't a, the, the most beautiful one in the room, okay? But it was something about her that caught his attention. And we all know that it was, you know, that God's providential hand was in that story. And because God's providential hand was in that story, that God put the love put love in, the, in that king's heart for Esther. But we also know that it was other beautiful women in that kingdom, but he chose her, amen. And so there's gonna always be other beautiful women. And ladies, we got to stop being jealous and envious of each other, okay? So I say again, going back to engage according, I don't think it should be more than a year. You know, if you got to that point of engagement after courting, that means that, yeah, she the one. Okay, so but that's just my my um it, okay, let me just say this. If you find yourself in the courting relationship, but then you find out that you still have unresolved issues, then you may you will need to wait because I don't encourage wanting to emerge with a lot of unresolved issues. Now, ladies, if you another man's husband is not your husband, okay? I mean, another woman's husband is not your husband. Okay, another man, well, I better say another man too these days. Another man, another woman's husband is not your husband, okay? So don't let the devil fool you, okay? Another, don't let the devil tell you that the pastor's, the pastor wife is going to die and, and you're going to be the pastor's wife, okay? Don't get caught up in misguided affections, okay? If that man is married, if he's financially tied to somebody, if he's if he got emotional um, issues with another woman, that's not your husband, honey. Move on. God got a man that's going to be free to love you 100%, okay? He's not going to be bonded or in bondage with another woman financially, emotionally, okay? You want a man that is emotionally free and financially free and not tied to another woman, okay? So, you know, we as ladies, we have to make better decisions before we even say yes to courting a man, okay? Just like men do research on us, we have to do research on them too. You know, trust me, a man of, 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 um, of great esteem, a man that got it going on, He's sought the Lord many times before he made his move towards you. He sought the Lord and prayed and probably did some investigating and some more stuff about you before he made his move, okay? So we as women, we have to do the same thing. You investigating me, I'm going to investigate you. We got to see, you know, but anyways. Um, but so I would say no more than six months to a year and a half. If it goes over two, then y'all need to have a conversation and find out, did God really, 
find out did God really tell him you would have won? Okay, I'm gonna answer the question about married. This is a good one. Ladies, if you're really religious, you can turn, um, you can go to another um, social media page, okay? Because I'm about to get uncut on you. I'm about to tell you the real truth, okay? And um, so if you can't handle it, you can go ahead and, and, and move on to another social media page. The question was asked, prophetess. They was asking me the question. When me and my husband first got married, he didn't want to do certain things. But now he wants to do all these exotic things. What should I do? Whew, I'm, I got to Give me a little air. Give me one second. She said, what should I do? Ladies, the Bible says that the marriage bed is undefiled. And let me tell you something. If you have a husband who have fantasies, who have, um, you know, a high sex drive, baby, you better give it to him, okay? Because once you get married, guess what? You may not like what I'm about to say. Your body belongs to him. But guess what? The other way around, his body belongs to you, okay? So don't be talking about you got a headache, honey, okay? Because at the end of the day, when you're married, you, your body belongs to him and his body belongs to you. Do not withhold, the Bible tells you don't withhold sex from each other. Only if that woman has, is on her menstrual cycle, then you can, you know, abstain from one another, okay? However, the Bible is very clear on, on um, the bed being undefiled, the marriage bed being undefiled between a husband and a wife. Now look, now a lot of this stuff should be talked about in counseling. I don't know, she didn't, you didn't, if you're listening, you didn't go into detail with me about it being discussed in counseling. So let me just say this to all the women who are listening. Before you say I do, find out if your husband has a high sex drive, okay? And you be honest if you don't, because guess what? If you say you do, but you really don't, and he does, you're going to have problems in that marriage, okay? So don't be afraid to ask the question. Don't be afraid to say, honey, I have a high sex drive. Do you have one too? Do not be afraid. When you're married, the bed is undefiled. And what somebody may be saying, well, having a high sex drive don't mean doing exotic things. Again, you ask those questions in counseling. Don't allow no pastor, anybody that's counseling you who try to make you feel guilty for asking certain questions, that's, you, you need to find another counselor. Because when I counsel people, I tell them straight off the top, be 100% honest, what do you want in a wife in every area, especially specifically when it comes to sex. And be honest with this woman before she say I do. And woman, you be honest with this man before you say I do. Because guess what? Sex is a big part of a marriage. Uh, somebody may be lying to themselves saying sex ain't everything. The devil is a liar. God made sex for a husband and a wife to come together for gratification and to uh, be fruitful and to multiply. God gave that gift to a husband and a wife, especially if the wife have a high sex drive too. Okay, to come together and to for and, and for their souls to connect. That's why God hates fornication, and that's why God tells people not to fornicate and not to commit adultery. Because when you get married and when you have sex, that soul tie is stronger than any other soul tie that you can have. Uh, the soul tie between a husband and a wife is very, very strong. Okay, so again. Honey, I'm going to tell you like this. You asked me the question and I'm going to answer it, okay? If your husband has a high sex drive, then you need to fulfill, fulfill his need, okay? All right? Fulfill his need. Now, let me say this. If he's doing something that's endangering you, then that's something different. You don't have to put your life in jeopardy, okay? Now, I ain't talking about if this man, he, he pulling out whips and chains and beating you and that, you know, and that hurt, you know, that's the problem. But you got some women who like that kind of stuff, but you got some that's like, wait a minute. Now, that is a problem. But again, you have to find out before y'all get married. Now, if he 
lie and say he, he, you know, he doesn't do those things, but then you find out he does, then, you know, God will understand because that's deception. You married under the, uh, under the tense, the pretense of deception. You married thinking that this man, you know, was a kinky, okay? That's the word for a kinky. All right, but men too, men you have an obligation for your wife. If you're married to if a woman and she want to have sex 10 times a day, honey, you better make it available. Okay? All right. So um, I hope I answered everybody's questions. Okay? That was the question I had for the married. If you're married, if your husband wants to do certain things in the bedroom, should you? Yes. Why? Capital Y, capital E, and capital S. Okay, all right. If you want to do it 10 times, yes. Capital Y, capital E, capital S. Okay, all right. Now, if he's doing anything that's going to hurt your body or you know make you sick, then that's something different. Okay, because your health comes first, but that's a conversation you and he need to have. Okay, and um, somebody may say, Well, is something wrong with him because he want to have sex 10 times a day? No, it's not that if he's doing it with his wife. Okay, if he's not out here cheating and messing with, you know, all types of people and he expect that from his wife, no, nothing is wrong with him. Okay, the bed is under file. What you doing, your marriage bed is between you and your husband. It's not between nobody else, okay? All right, you should not be ashamed. God is not going to look at you and shake his head, okay? God ain't looking at what's going on in your bedroom between you and your husband. And another question is that I was asked, should you wear negligee? Should you wear, yes, you should. You should, you should, you should wear negligees. You should, um, you should do a whole lot of other stuff. You should wear negligees if you wanna, um, if you guys, if he wants you to dress up like a maid, put a pole in the bedroom, baby, you in the confines of your bedroom. You in the confines of your home, okay? When you're out in the street, yes, act like a lady, be holy, be godly, be virtuous, honey. But when you get home, if your husband say, honey, let's play something. You know, let, let, let's let's play this. So let's play, do it. That's your husband, okay? So I'm talking to the woman on tonight. Woman to woman, all right? Woman to woman. Yeah, yeah. That doesn't mean you're not saved or sanctified or filled with the Holy Spirit. You are, you're doing what God told you to do. Make sure that your husband is taken care of in every area. And I hope he's doing what, you know, God told him to do to make sure that his wife is being taken care of in every area. So we went a little raw and uncut on tonight. So we talked about the single life, the court and life, the engaged life and the married life. Okay. So let's open up the, um, let's open up for questions. Dr. Bond, do we have any questions? Dr. Henderson, we got two questions. I'll give them to you one at a time and then uh, let me know when you want the next one. Uh, what's your take if a man is not a Christian, but he's a good man and loves the woman and wants to get marry her? Wow. What's my take if he's not a Christian, but he does love her? He's a good man. He loves her and he wants to marry her. Is that the answer? Yes. I mean, is that the question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Is this a woman asking a question or a man? A woman. Okay. All right. Well, the Bible tells us to not be unequally yoked, but that does that's not really well. It is talking about in the spiritual realm, but I think you guys, if you have the same value system, remember I talked about that value system not too long ago. How it's important to have the same value system. Is if you guys have the same value system, okay? Meaning that he, yeah, the same value system, hard work, perseverance, um, he go do does whatever it takes to make sure that he he um, he motivates you, you motivate him, things of that nature. Um, <laughs> you know, that's a really good question, and I'm tr I'm trying to be fair-minded and I'm trying not to put my my really prophetic hat on and answering it um 
The Bible says that you could be good, but you could still, you know, pretty much go to hell. If you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but the Bible also says that the man, the man is sanctified by his wife. So if she goes to church, if she's saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit, she sanctifies him, okay? She sanctifies him. So my take is if he loves you, if he's treating you good, if he's, you know, if he's a good man, if he's working, paying the bills, doing everything he can, if he's a great man, if he really loves you, but you need to sit down and find out what's his understanding of love, because a lot of people have different understandings of love. Find out what his, what, what does he mean by love? And do you know what love is, okay? Because according to 1 Corinthians 13, you need to weigh that against what he say he love you and love is an action word. So you want to make sure that um, that what, what he's depicting or what he's showing you is actually real love, okay? But if he loves you and he's um, doing what he's supposed to do and you are a Christian, I'm not going to tell you not to move forward with that because you got some people that's in church that are Christians are uh, 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 just not right yet. But I will say that um, you will sanctify him, okay? But you got to make sure, okay? Because you you got to make sure that, you know, it's real love and not infatuation or misguided affections, okay? All right. I hope I answered your question. Dr. Vaughn? Yeah, Dr. Henderson, the next one comes from a woman also, and it basically says, what about someone who talks to you on Facebook or social media? What about that? I mean, what's the question? Yeah, well, the question is, what about someone who wants to talk to you on Facebook, just social media only? and not necessarily on the phone, or I'm, I'm interpreting this as either on the phone or, or live even in some cases. What I, don't, I don't recommend, me personally, I don't recommend those types of um, relationships. I don't recommend um, Facebook relationships and I don't recommend social media relationships because people could paint a picture one way and be totally different. So if this guy is not talking to you on the phone, then he's hiding something. If you're not able to see it, see his face and talk to him at the same time, FaceTime something, then he's hiding something. And I, will, I would not recommend being in a relationship or even going any further with this person. Even if you were friends, friends should be able to talk to each other on the phone. Friends should be able to talk to each other FaceTime, even if you guys weren't in a relationship. But if he is not talking to you on the, on the phone, you know, and another thing I advise against is somebody who's always texting. Every time you turn around, they texting you. No, pick up the phone and call. You know, if a person texts you all the time and, and refuse to pick up the phone and have a conversation with you, you need to run from that, okay? He's not serious about you or the relationship. If a man wants you, he want to hear your voice. He want to hear his honey's voice, okay? <laughs> all right, Dr. Vaughn. Yeah, Dr. Henderson, the next question comes from a woman also. How do you feel about contract marriages? <laughs> contract marriages. How do I feel about contract marriages? Well, you know, well, to me, I think that when two people, when God put two people together, that is, if you really love each other, then there shouldn't be no issues with trust. You know, don't marry somebody if you feel like you have to put a contract on a table. If you feel like you got to go into a contract or you have to come up with a prenuptial agreement, don't marry that person. There's still something in you that's dealing with trust or fear. And that thing needs to be dealt with before you say I do. You should not marry anybody that you don't trust. You should not marry anybody that you feel like you have to put together a prenup or a contract before you say I do. I'm not saying don't go into a relationship. I'm not saying for you to go into a relationship blindly, but if you both are in the in the things of God, if you both have um, a relationship with the Lord, then you know that um, you know that this is somebody you could trust because God is going to let you know. And okay, so how do I feel about contract marriages? I don't believe in them. I don't believe in them at all. But a lot of people who are very wealthy, they always have prenups. And it's, and it's because they want to um, protect their assets in case y'all get a divorce. So you already coming into the merge thinking we're going to divorce. 
you know, that's a, that's a red flag for me. Um, I think that everybody should have a will, you know, he should have a will and she should have a will so that if anything were to happen one or the other, that, you know, if they had children before the marriage, that those children will, um, will get what is theirs. Okay. Um, I think that to me that, um, if you're co to, to, to protect each other, each other's assets, that who, whatever you have coming into the merge, you know, what, what you had before you said, I do is what you should keep if y'all were to separate. So if this person was very prosperous, a millionaire and y'all got married and he was already a millionaire, he should keep what he came what he had before he came into the merge and she should keep what she had before she came into the merge. But if they somehow are married and been married for over 10 something years and, and it don't work, then they need to come together. And you know, if they built anything together, then yeah, you divide it. But me personally, I do not believe in contracts and prenups and things of that nature because I feel like you already coming in thinking that we're not going to work. And I feel like you already coming in and you won't make an effort for it to work because you feel like, well, I got a prenup or I got a contract. So if it don't work, oh, well, it ain't working. I'm out, you know, so I don't believe in them. Next question. Yeah, Dr. Henderson, uh, what are some good topics to talk about early on in the dating process? Well, you, if you're dating, you want to make sure that um, he's not emotionally or financially tied to anyone else, okay? That's very important because if you're dating somebody and they're emotionally and financially tied to somebody else and they're like, you know, we're, they're not together with that person, but it, it, you don't need to get involved with that, okay? So you want to make sure that there, there are no emotional, emotional or financial issues um, with this person. You want to make sure that um, you want to talk about your value system because don't waste your time. It's important to find out what each other's value system is because I can tell you straight up, if this person believe this and you believe that, it's not going to work, okay? It used to be a saying that opposites attract. Yeah, opposites attract, but many times they don't stay together. It's important for you to be with somebody that has the same value system as you. I'm not saying the same race as you. Race don't has no, have nothing to do with value system. He could be white and she could be black, but they have the same value you system it has nothing to do with race okay love has nothing to do with race and let me make that clear okay the same value system you know it's very important discuss the value system discuss what what each other what is the what is his vision for his life what does he know his purpose a man that don't know his vision for his life and don't know his purpose and life can't lead you can't guide you he's still trying to find himself so it's important for you to find out what is his purpose what is his vision for his life okay all right. So, and two, it's important for you to tell him what, what, what's your vision. And it's not too early to talk about those things. It's not too early to talk about those things on the first date, first, second, third date. Those are very important. You might as well get it out of the way. So you won't waste your time with somebody for six, seven, eight months dating somebody and still, and, and still don't know what his, what his plans are for the future, what his vision is. Dr. Vaughn. Amen, Dr. Henderson. Our next uh, question comes from a woman as well. What question should I ask a man that wants to marry me? Well, it all depends how long you got. Have you guys been dating? Have you been courting? How long you been knowing each other? Um, can you, if she can hear me, I need to know that before I answer the question. Amen, Doc. We'll let you know when that comes in, but that was the general question there. Okay, yeah, so you definitely need to, I mean, how long have you guys been together? Um, if he, he comes to you and say he wants to marry you, then, I mean, you should have already asked a lot of questions before it even gets to that point. If he just coming to you off the top and, and y'all don't even know each other and he said he wants to marry you, or, you know, you his wife, then you, you need to say, we need to wait for a minute because I don't know you. Let me pray about it. You know, let me go and, and seek the Lord. And who, you know, how do you know that God said I was your wife? What did God say to you? You know, um, but just because somebody come to you that you never seen before asking to marry you, then, you know, that's a red flag for me. You know, I need to know, uh, I don't know you. <laughs> you know? So, but 
But if you guys have been courting and have been engaged, you should know each other enough. So if he come and ask to marry you, you should have enough information to make a sound decision on the spot to say yes or no. Dr. Vaughn. Amen, Doc. Yeah, that, that comment did come back in. Having date on that last question, having date just been talking to each other. Haven't haven't dated. Yeah. So that talk. means they they've been talking to each other far as just them two, and he's not talking to nobody else. Or I mean, okay. there haven't been a conversation yet that they are together. Yeah, just so, so none of those conversations have been had. There's, there's been no conversation of a commitment. There has been no conversation that they are together, that he's not seeing anyone else, she's not seeing anyone else. Then she need to she need to go and pray about it. And well, first of all, she need to say to him, you know, you want to marry me. We just been talking. What is it about me that you feel that, or did God tell you? Have you prayed about it? Um that for you to know or think that I'm your wife. So that's the question. And then she needs to pray about it. And before, you know, they've been talking, she, they need to get to know each other more. Yeah, I don't, how long have they been talking? Two years, if it's been two, three years, and there still haven't been a commitment, they just been talking, then he's dealing with some fear issues. He's dealing with some issues that, that needs to be resolved. Dr. Vaughn. Amen, Dr. Henderson, back to you. Okay, so y'all questions have been awesome. Any more questions before I end? We talked about single life, court and life, engaged life, and the married life, okay? So that's very important. And I, you know, the question is still on my mind, the question that was asked, the lady that asked me, um, if a man love you, but if he isn't, go, if he doesn't go to church, should you, um, should you marry him? Um, if you guys have the same value system, if he loves you, According to how God says that a man should love a woman, but always remember this, in order for a man to know what God says, how to love a woman, he has to have a relationship with God. Okay, so what is his kind of love? Is he basing his love on um, the worldly standard of love? So you have to um, ask yourself all those questions, but also the word does say that a, saint, that a wife sanctifies her husband. All right, so. All right, thank you for listening to the episode of Woman to Woman. We're going to have another talk soon, okay? I just want to thank you for listening. If you have any other questions, you can email me at drdthministries at gmail.com or dth at virtualconsultantco.com. Woman to woman, if you care like I do, I just come to encourage you quickly before I let you go. I want to encourage you to let you know that God says that you're beautiful. You fifthly and you have been wonderfully made. God has a plan for your life. You don't have to settle. You can be single and love God and have the best life, have the best time of your life. But don't be so caught up. So when, because when God brings you that husband or when God present you to that husband, you got to be able to recognize that he's the one, okay? When you're courting, make sure that it's just you and him and no third parties, okay? No third party should be in your courtship. OK, if you're engaged, make sure you're not engaged for 10 years. OK, because that's just too long. Just because you have a ring on your finger don't mean that you that you guys have the paper sign. The paper sign means that is legal. OK, the ring on your finger don't mean that y'all, you know, is legal. OK, so remember that um, he may put a ring on it, but make sure that you both have an understanding that we're engaged. OK, I'm about to I'm planning this wedding. All right. So engagement means the way I'm planning the wedding and it's going to be this year. All right. <laughs> OK. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Thank you guys for tuning in and thanks for joining. We're going to have another episode pretty soon and we're going to get really raw. Have a good night.